Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. I am Rob, your host, and Chris is back on the show. Been a little while, but good to have you back, man. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a little fun, you and I, with a couple boys here today. We got some rookies. I mean, they they're double A. Would we call them double A? Are they in single ball? Single no, A ball? What, what, I'd how say they're we? double A. They're double, double A. a yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, Cameron and Ryan joining the show. How you guys doing? How's it going? Doing good. It's a good. pleasure to be here. We're going to see about that. <laughs> uh, we are going to go through. You guys are, are starting to dive into bourbon and starting to enjoy the, I call it a hobby, because once you dive in, it's kind of, uh, takes a little funding to kind of keep that going, and, and uh, bottles grow, and your palate changes, but you guys are kind of uh, on the front end of that. Would that be fair to say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but just... you're looking to kind of explore and, and grow in your appreciation for the brown juice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So how familiar are you all with the bourbon world, Facebook pages, kind of in those groups and things like that? Are you, have you done any of that yet, or are you just kind no, of... No, the Facebook pages. Uh, mine's mostly Wikipedia. It's about as deep as I've gotten into it. Okay, so you're just kind of learning by reading and, reading and kind about of doing it, yeah, it what yourself. Chris is telling me. He's um, doing his own then, research. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's about as deep as I've gotten into it. You haven't joined any... Facebook groups or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, I've checked out the Bourbon Reddit subreddit okay. uh, a few times, and that's pretty pretty informative. There's a lot of good info on that. Okay. Uh, but I haven't joined any Facebook, Facebook groups. or. So one reason to join Facebook groups is some, sometimes, um, not all the time, but a lot of times, they'll let you know when drops hit, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, well or 12 hit or, you know, Eagle Rare hit, so the, the allocated bottles. So sometimes it's a good – kind of indicator to go, oh, let me go check a couple of spots and see if I can get that. Um, other than that, I don't know, you know, other than showing off your bottles, Chris, I don't know how much value <laughs> there is to the Facebook groups. No, I'm in them. I'm not going to lie and say I'm not. There have actually been some people post some pictures and, and you get some comments of bottles that you may have kind of overlooked and not realized that they could be good because you don't know anything about them. Yep. So th- that's definitely been helpful. How about you, Cameron? Where you at in your bourbon journey? Yeah, I'm definitely still pretty young in it. Um, okay. I really, I've got a couple of bottles at the house, but other than when I come down here to Katie, I just kind of, you know, dive into it whenever I feel like. It's still pretty young, pretty early. So here, here's the first question I have for you two. Your favorite bottle to drink on right now. What are you drinking that you go, this is what I found and I really enjoy this bottle. And if it's more than one or you know, maybe two or three, that's, List them for me. Right now, my t- probably I have two favorites: um, it's the Wild Turkey Rare Breed, and then the um, the Knob Creek Single Barrel. It's a one, I believe it's one twenty proof. Really yeah. enjoying that one right now. Look at him already at barrel strength. <laughs> he, my he, goodness, he jumped in and literally went straight to the deep end. Yeah, I was going to say skip the the <laughs> the uh, floaties and all that stuff. <laughs> How about you, Cameron? Yeah, my favorite, my go to is is still Buffalo Trace. I drank it a long time ago, and I was kind of. Okay. It's kind of it was good stuff for me. So. Do you still have that Eagle Rare, Eagle Rare collecting dust on your bar it's, that I gave you? I knocked off the dust a little bit. <laughs> I've, I've, I've knocked into it here and there. Uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. I'll, I'll, I'll hit that a little bit. Okay, so what we thought would be fun today is to kind of take them through some bourbons and kind of focusing on the uh, big distilleries. We're not going to take you into all the crazy stuff. This would be just kind of figuring out, trying to start to figure out what your palate likes right now. Obviously, as you go through this, Chris, you can agree or disagree, but I think we all know that our palate changes as you continue to drink bourbons. You might have something today, just like wine, Chris. You you don't like it, or you like it a lot today, and then five years from now you go, why the hell was I drinking that? Well, a a prime example, no offense to people in Canada, but I can't drink Crown anymore. Yeah, not straight anymore. I've drank Crown for a long time, and I can't. I just, it's too sweet. I can't do it. Yeah, it is very, very sweet. That's a good point. Again, no offense to, you know. Oh, yeah, you are. People. Yeah, Canadians just, you know. Go ahead and tell them. I first. love Canada. <laughs> just don't like Crown. <laughs> Canada's beautiful. Just can't drink Crown anymore. So we're going to go through some bottles today. Have some fun with you guys. These are blind. Um, we, we're not going to say what you have in the glass. And the whole point isn't to, you know, you to tell us about the whiskey or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's just to kind of figure out. What do you like right now? And then when you tell us what you like, what you don't like, we'll reveal what they are. And it'll give you some kind of idea of whose profile you like as far as distillery. And then as you continue to go through bourbon, now you know, hey, if I like wild turkey and I like that profile, I want to start 
kind of going through their different product lines and really enjoying some of their things. And if I don't like something, then there's no re- no reason to spend a bunch of money on that mm-hmm. particular product if you if you know you're not going to like it. Um, so we have uh, one and two, three and four in front of us. One and two are going to be a comparison. Okay. Two whiskeys that we've kind of aligned that are similar proofs from mm-hmm. two different uh, uh, producers. Okay. And then three and four would be the same way. Um, the only difference in one and two is that one is a, a, a single barrel. Do you guys know the differences between small batch, single barrel, barrel proof, that kind of stuff? No, I, I don't in particular. Okay. Not, not enough to explain it. I mean, I kind of knew get some of the. Yeah, that, that's that kind of understanding that terminology and what the product is, is important as you mm-hmm. go through whiskey, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of hit on a lot of those things as we go through these tastings okay. today. So, um, let's go ahead and dive into one and two. Okay. Nose them both. And then what I want you to do is tell me which one you like best on the nose. Okay. And we'll remember that. And then we'll taste them and you guys can tell me which one you like best on the palate. Okay. So my criteria for always kind of judging a whiskey or grading what, how I like it, one is the nose always. And Ooh. then the palate, how you like it on the palate. And then the finish of the of the bourbon. So, any initial thoughts on the nose, fellas? Chris, you get to chime in too. I'm... Oh, I know. On the nose, yeah. Mm, that's kind of tough. I kind of like two on the nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two's a little bit sweeter. It smells a little. It's bit a sweeter. little more subtle. If that makes any sense. What'd you say about two? Uh, it's just. Smells a little bit sweeter. I don't know if that's the right. Okay. <laughs> two, two, definitely for me. Uh, in a way, it's a little softer. Okay. Than than the first one. So you mean like the ethanol? The, yeah. The kind of the yeah, burn yeah, on your yeah. nose. Yeah. Absolutely. You can leave your nose in there a little bit longer versus the first right. one. Right. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. First one's a lot stronger. It smells. How about the? Uh, what what kind of characteristics are you getting on the nose? Anything that's pleasing to you anything that puts you know puts the whiskey off a little bit to you you're like yeah, i'm not a fan of that are they nothing, both kind of nothing, similar nothing that i dislike like i said number two just has a better I, I don't know what words to put it into but it's got like a sweeter a sweeter smell to it so yeah, i agree with that i think it's you have two whiskeys here um chris what do you think about these two i you know what they are and we have I know what they are is care. there one that on the nose that you, you like better than the two. other? I like two. Do you really? I like two on the nose better. Okay. Um, one, believe it or not, and I know that it it has a little bit more, I guess you'd say, heat on the nose. Okay. In my opinion, um, than two. Mm-hmm. It's not as subtle as two. Okay. And see, my favorite on the nose is one. What, what what are you getting, Ryan, on the nose? Anything that you can identify that makes you kind of think of something? I mean, obviously, you get that brown sugar yeah. and cinnamon and things like that that you normally get on a bourbon, but anything that stands out to you? And number two, maybe some vanilla. I keep on going back to that. Okay. I mean, I don't want to – I don't – I'm not far enough along to be able to pick out the – You just know if it smells good or exactly. tastes good. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. let's stay with that. Number one for me, I don't know if you guys pick it up, sometimes when somebody will say something – It'll trigger you going, oh, now I get that. Mm-hmm. So on number one, do you get any banana? Yeah. Now that you say it, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's part of... Uh, and it's not overly pronounced. No. But it's very subtle in there, but you can definitely pick it up. And I will tell you by saying that, to you two guys, that doesn't mean anything, right? Does it or does it not? Not really. Okay. Not a whole to lot. Most guys who drink bourbon, if you said that, they would right away go, I know what it is. Because that's a particular note that's associated with a particular distillery. Okay. So just going forward, you'll remember that. Okay. If you have glasses where you, somebody blinds you on something and you go, I'm getting that banana, mm-hmm. you'll have some idea of what this should be. Okay. okay. Hmm. All right, let's taste them. What do you say? Yeah, let's go for it. Cameron, what do you, what do you think so far? You taste number one? I tasted one. How are you tasting it? Here's what I want to know. Are you putting it on your palate? 
just a small like you're sipping a hot coffee. Let it sit there for about two seconds, counting 1,001, 1,002, and then swallow. Because if you just put it in and swallow, you're going to miss kind of what it's giving you on your palate. Right. Now, I, I may not let it sit for quite as long. Okay. But uh, I, I definitely tried to let it, you know, sit there and enjoy the taste of it. Okay, good. Um, it takes away the burn when you do that, too. Yes. Especially on the initial. Okay. It sets your palate up. And you're, you're doing exactly what I think you should do, too, is always taste the whiskey twice, especially if you're having a, you know, this one I think you're, you're kind of getting your palate going and warmed up, so tasting it a second time. The next one, because you've just had one particular whiskey, you want to kind of, it's almost like rinsing your palate, so yep. you have that next pour to really kind of evaluate and see what you like about that particular gotcha. bourbon. Ryan? It's good. I mean, that's... That's, that's our standard. Yeah, you, I mean, you like I, I, it? I like it. At, okay. Like I said, I'm not far enough along to be able to say, oh, I get no, this, but this, you, this you like it. it. Yeah, I enjoy it. So let's it just, tastes familiar. I feel like I've had this one before. Oh, really? But, okay. I mean, like I said, I'm not to the point where I can differentiate the. Yeah. So let's just make that kind of our grading is if you like it, mm-hmm. and then proof. Do you think the proof's okay for your palate right now? And I think, Ryan, it is for yours uh, because you're drinking <laughs> rare breed and. High proof things already. Yeah. And is this 116 proof good? Yes, it is. It's really good. <laughs> Probably good for Cameron's too because we know he does a lot of shooting whiskeys and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I've, shot. I've shot some whiskey in my day, but um, <laughs> no, this was tasting these whiskeys is it's growing my palate. Okay. I'm, I'm starting to learn how to taste the whiskey more rather than just shoot it, like you said. Yeah. Um, or mix it. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, Learn how to drink it and appreciate it for, you know, the reason it's made. You bring up a good point, though, Chris. Where are you? Did you guys just, because Chris drinks a lot of neat bourbons, did he get you to start drinking neat? Or did you come from, you know, Chris and I'll tell you, our progression was, you know, Chris makes fun of me. Mine was, you know, a lot of Coke and a splash of whiskey to start. Yeah. And finally got to where I had a lot of whiskey and a splash of Coke. Coke, Mm -hmm. And then finally neat. Did you guys, were you mixers before you, you got into drinking neat, or did you uh, jump right into the, the neat? Oh, yeah, no, I was, I started out doing them like in an old-fashioned, you know, we'd come okay. here and Chris would give me a Glencairn glass, and I would, you know, take a drink and, you know, have three chest hairs pop up, because <laughs> I wasn't, that's, I just, I was a beer guy and a wine guy, I didn't like, you know, hard liquor, um, and then I just started drinking them in an old-fashioned, and I started buying my own bottles, and I'm like, you know, I'm wasting these, you know, mixing them, I'm not getting any of the you know, what you're supposed to be getting out of it. So that's why I started, you know, drinking them straight or on ice. Yeah. How about you, Cameron? Yeah, at first I, I really started mixing. Okay. Um, either, whether it's Sprite or Coke, ginger ale even. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'd come down to Katie and um, have a little taste of what Chris was Chris providing. would say, be a, be a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was definitely, hey, try this. Here, try this. You might like this. And yeah. so definitely after, you know, a couple of trips, I would – begin to realize like hey this is uh you know these are some good bourbons these are some good you know everybody blames it on me <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it is enjoyable it, but it yeah is. absolutely I, I, and, I agree and now it's i'm kind of to the point where mixing it's not quite as enjoyable i, I mm-hmm. would rather taste more more bourbon than i would you know soda so yeah no i and i think that's uh, the normal progression. Mm-hmm. So hearing yeah. that you guys did the same thing, because I'm seeing more younger people because they're influenced by people like me or you, Chris, that drink it neat, uh, like my son. Yeah. He's never had it mixed at all. Mm-hmm. Every time he has a bourbon with me, it's always neat. Cause so he literally he kinda, jumped straight in the deep he end. He jumped straight yeah. in the deep end. So I was just wondering how you two yeah. guys, if because of the influence of Chris, mm-hmm. if that was kind of the same way with you guys. But yeah. Like you and I, Rob, grew up, that's what we did. We mixed. Oh, hell yeah. It, it, I mean, it went further. College and... Because, you know, we didn't drink in high school. We mixed, no, we no, no. college. You know, Do we people were, drink? We were 21. In high that's school? when we started drinking. Do uh, they drink in high school, some people? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. I wouldn't but, think so. But, but no, I mean, we mixed, and, and then it wasn't until I'd say probably the last, what, five years that I really started diving into the neat and the, you know, or maybe even just a whiskey stone to just to build my palate. And not so. just that, the last five years, both of us would say, too, that uh, we kind of got the palate going like that, but which also made us explore the different oh, yeah. offerings. And oh, now yeah. we have, you know, oh, all yeah. these bottles that our wives just encourage us to keep buying. 
They of course. Love it. Yeah. Of course. You know what the rule is, right, Chris? We have the same rule, I think. Buy a bottle of wine, buy a bottle of bourbon. She gets the wine, we get the bourbon, everybody's happy. Well, if that's the case, then I still have some bourbon to buy. There you go. You have my permission. Because I don't buy a case of bourbon at a time. <laughs> yeah. Good point. So. With penny shipping. And you don't drink your bottle of bourbon in one night. Nope. I was waiting for him to go, oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> nope. nope. All right, number two. Have we, have we dove into that yet? Nope. Not. See, I think the, the nose on one is way better. You guys liked the nose on two. I'm always off with my nose compared to most people I, I drink with. That one feels like a lower proof. Really? Yeah, the right right up front, right at the right at the tip of your tongue, it does, and then later on, it feels a little hotter. But I, I, think, it, I think it's a lower proof than number one. Ironically, yes the the nose, in my opinion, matches the taste. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Tell because me what that means. Number two, the nose was more subtle to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, the taste was more subtle to me. Yep. And I liked the taste of number one. Okay. Ryan and Cameron, different was, opinion than that? I was kind of, it matched up. I I preferred the smell of in the nose of number two, and the taste followed that. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It went down a lot easier, mm-hmm. a little bit smoother in a way. Um, it was something I, I preferred over one. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed number two over number one. Okay, and I, I'm with you, Chris. I think uh, number one had more punch on it, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. bigger, bolder, bigger <laughs> mouthfeel, and for us, but it we've does. also been doing this, sure. And our palate has grown to where a standard, you know, ninety proof is not generally what we will sip on. Yeah. This isn't ninety proof, just so you know, boys. No, but my my sipper is probably anywhere from. 110 to 120 mm-hmm. on yeah. an average. Yeah. Which is a high proof. I mean, that's getting into a higher proof. Specifically yeah. 116.8. This, I, <laughs> I poured these two specifically first because this falls into my category, kind of like Chris is talking about, of that warm-up pour. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of get your palate kind of warmed up and kind of acclimated to the bourbon, and then we'll go up in proofs as we go. Okay. But that way it doesn't just shock your palate the first couple out of the, the chute a little bit. Okay. Um and so that's one of the things he taught me a while back was what I said. He said, what do you want? And I said, I want this. He goes, well, how about we start here and work your way up? Yeah. Because if I come home late from work and I've only got one pour, I'm probably going rare breed. Going big. I'm not yeah. starting and progressing if I'm, you know. Just, yeah. Just not. Okay. So it sounds like you two guys, Ryan and uh, Cameron, are going to go number two was your favorite out of these two. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, ready yeah, for the definitely, reveal? Yeah, definitely number two. Let's see it. So number one is Cooper's Craft, okay. which is, this is a Old Forester product, mm-hmm. 100 proof, and this is aged, I think, somewhere in the five to seven year range. Okay. I think it's something like that. And then you have pour number two, which okay. you all like, single barrel. Okay. So this is a different, the, the not a batched uh, bourbon like the... Uh, Cooper's Craft, this is a single barrel, also 100 proof, exactly the same proof. Okay. So, it doesn't taste that way, huh? No, it doesn't. It really didn't. Like I said, that, I would have said, like, if we had to guess the proof, I'd say that was and probably a I know Four Roses, single barrel, you can buy that. Anywhere. I've seen it every liquor store. Anywhere. Now, the thing about this one is it's always the same recipe. Mm-hmm. So, they have 10 different recipes, but when you buy single barrel, uh, it's always OBSV. Okay. Uh, and that's all you will ever get. What, now, from what is, the store. What is that OBSV? That's the recipe that they're using. Okay. So the yeast strain is the V. They have five different yeast strains. Okay. So you can have like an OBSV, an OBSO, an OBSK, okay. an OBSF. Okay. The last letter is the different yeast strains. It kind of gives it its kind of profile. Okay. And then the B in that is the mash bill, the recipe, which okay. tells me it's a higher rise to 35%. Okay. If you had an OESO, an OESV. That tells me it's the 20% rye recipe. Okay. So mm-hmm. both are still pretty high. I mean, Four Roses is a it's, it's a rabbit hole you can get down. And, and oh, yeah. It's, but I, I mention all those recipes because 
stores or groups will do pics of these. And then if you hear me talk about an OESK or an OBSK, mm-hmm. you can find that when they do a pic, if you can find it. Okay. Uh, they're fun to taste through and see the big difference, but they come barrel proof, kind of like Ryan, your, your rare breed, mm-hmm. somewhere between usually 118 to you know 135 okay. proof. And they're a lot of fun to drink through. I've and, got probably... And if you look at the top of Rob's main bar... It looks like he works for four roses. <laughs> That's just, you haven't even been upstairs to see <laughs> no, in the studio haven't. all the, yeah, there's another 30 or 40 up there. And that's that's a very small collection compared to some four oh, roses sure. guys. But four roses is a fun one. And, and, you know, single barrel. So you go, okay, I liked that one. And if you ever go to the store and you buy another single barrel four roses mm-hmm. and you go, well, this one sucks. It's because it's a single barrel. Mm-hmm. Each barrel is going different. to be a different. little bit different. And there's a number on there that tells you whether it's, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six? Yeah, so you're going to get the run that it was in. It can get kind of confusing. So this is going to tell you this. This was on Tier 1 in Four Roses Rick House, their warehouse for storing barrels. They have six tiers. Okay. And I have the thought that if it's going to be watered down to 100 proof, I want it on the lower tier. Because that means it's not going to lose as much to the angel share in that that mm-hmm. bourbon. Higher tiers are going to get more heat, and they're going to have the evaporation of the bourbon. Okay, and so you're going to have to put more water in to get it to 100 proof. Mm-hmm. You would look for the lower so, number. So it's, not, a, lot, it's a lot of chemistry. that's my a lot of chemistry. That there there can be. That's my theory. Um, but because it's a single barrel, you might have one that you go one sucks, and I had a six tier, and it's awesome. So it's just kind of playing around and, and, and finding out. My point would be. Anytime you have a single barrel product and you try it and you go, I don't like it, mm-hmm. don't give up on the product, okay. buy it again, it it'll could be a be different that barrel. barrel. Each okay. barrel might be different. Each barrel okay. will be different, for sure. Gotcha. Similar profile, but it's just going to you know hit or miss in some places yeah. or it might yeah. be you know just kind of consistent. Another example of that would be one of the most popular bourbons that people getting into bourbon want are Blanton's. Blanton's, mm-hmm. also a single barrel product. So everyone you have will be a little different. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was the first single barrel, correct? Yes. That was uh, Elmer T. Lee went to Buffalo Trace and had them do that in honor of Blanton's. That, and the shape of the bottle, the horse, everybody it's a barrel. wants it, yep. blah, blah, blah. And, and they thought he was nuts to make a single barrel product, and then at that time in the 80s, he wanted to do it for $25 a barrel, and they thought he was absolutely crazy. And, you know, now Blanton's is you know one of the most popular bourbons around. So... Okay, that's those two. So now we're going to... Can I back up real yeah, quick? Yeah, go right ahead. So talking about... Talk to me a little bit about Four Roses. I really like the Small Batch Select. Small Batch Select is one of my favorite it's pours. It's a fantastic get. bourbon. So we talked about this being just a single barrel offering. You get what you get. It's always OBSV. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time I bought it, and you're like, well, what's recipe? There's not one. No. He's, there's got to be one. I said, Rob, there's not one yeah. on here. And that's where I learned that it's always the same. So if you look here, uh, it should say on here, OBSV somewhere, I would think. Maybe not. Maybe you just have to know that. Because no, it doesn't say OBSV anyway. But I can guarantee you, it's an OBSV. (laughs) Always OBSV at the 100 proof standard single barrel on a shelf. Getting to the Small small, small batch select, so when I told you there's 10 recipes mm-hmm. for this, for Four Roses, uh, Brent Elliott, who's the master distiller at Four Roses, he picked out six recipes that he really enjoys blending together. And that blend is what goes into the small batch select. Okay. And that's mm-hmm. a readily available, and it is fantastic. For is it? $55 a bottle? 50, yeah. Something like that? You have one? No, I don't. Okay. I drank it. It's uh, Yeah, it's a fantastic pour. Really, really good pour. And if you ever got lucky enough where you ran into a store and just by chance there was something called uh, the limited edition bottle, buy it. Uh, it's a limited edition they put out once a year from Four Roses, and it's another blend that Brent Elliott does of some recipes, and it's a very exclusive bottle. Okay. And they hit uh, that allocation season somewhere around September through December. Four Roses is a lot of fun. If you get into the, the small batch select and the next one down would be just small batch. Pretty sure that has all 10 recipes in it. And then if you get to the yellow label, which is 80 proof, never, ever buy it. It's not worth it. Um, it's uh, 
also all 10 recipes. Yeah. So uh, the, anything 80 proof, my opinion, don't waste your time. You two boys are drinking enough bourbon now. You start this. here and then go to select. Small yeah. batch select and then yeah. up. That's and that one's go. proofed at 104, so it's just okay. slightly above this. Okay, let's jump into glasses three and four. Now we're going to up the proof just a little bit. See, I'm giving okay. a little bit away. I probably shouldn't have done that. I should have let them recognize that. But let's nose these two, and then you guys tell me what you think about it. Anything jump out at you right at the start as, as far as just like it, don't like it, or like three better than four or four better than three? Three is pretty stout, but four has a really unique smell. Almost. I can't put my finger on it, but it's got a really... Cameron, either one jump out to you? Yeah, kind of like what Ryan was saying. Three, I think to me, three and four are definitely a lot. It, to the nose, it's a lot smoother. It's You can tell it's a more, uh, to me, it's like a more refined smell. But four, kinda, as, as what Ryan was saying, it, there's something about it mm. that just, it hits a little different. I can't figure out what it is that I'm picking up. Okay, but does either three or four, does one stand out to you that you like better, or are they both okay, pleasing, whatever? I like them both. Four is a little bit softer, not as hard on the... Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then there's something unique about four that I really like, because I can't say what it is, but okay, there's something... Well, let's go ahead and, and taste them and see what you guys think there, see if that changes. A lot of times I'll have a, a bourbon blind and think it's a fantastic nose mm -hmm. and then go to sip on it and, and it then i'm disappointed match. it's a big yeah. donut hole and you know obviously what you want as a bourbon drinker is to have that fantastic nose and then have the the palate and the finish up. match mm -hmm. and it's just a complete whiskey but i've had other times where it's not a great nose and then you go drink it and go okay that's fantastic you know <laughs> so uh that's why you do these things you figure it out okay three or four on the nose favorite Chris, do you have a favorite? Honestly, I like four just because it's a little it's it's a little more unique. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering how much influence this glass is having on the nose. I, that is that is true because we have two different type glasses for these two, and I'm not sure that's being fair to the whiskey. We have the standard Lynn Karen all the way through until four. If you guys have one that's done, put a little water, rinse it out, and let's pour that into there. See if it makes a difference on the nose. That's actually. Very good point. I just want to be fair to the whiskey. I'm still getting more, even when I do that, on number four. I'm getting a little more caramel. That may be what I'm picking up. I'm picking up more caramel. Okay. A little sweeter to me. At the, I'm getting more on the nose now out of the Glen Cairn than I was out of the. Yeah, it's a little more. Got a little more punch to more it. More concentrated. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. definitely got more punch to it. But there's still that something just different there. The profile didn't change. It's just you get a little more. Yeah, it's got a little more. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted you to make sure you got, that you didn't think it was. Okay, you guys ready to taste them? Let's do it. And again, I would say taste the same one twice and then go to the next one.
So we all we all tasted three. Mm-hmm. How you like it on the palate? It's good. I mean, it's not doesn't blow you away. Yeah, I mean, not it's not the best thing I've ever had, but it's I mean, it's good. It's not bad by any means. Is it better than one and two? I don't know. Okay. You don't like it any less or any more? Correct. Yeah, it's okay. just kind of right on that same. Okay. And that's that's a great – I'm glad you said that, and I'll tell you why later. Yeah. He How about did, you? He, he did this to me one day, and I made a comment to him about something I really liked. He said, oh, you really like that? Okay. Well, let's do this. And, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really – change. I really like number three. It uh, definitely – I still feel like I like number two – more than number three. Okay. Number three, uh, maybe put a couple hairs on my chest. Okay. Um, you can taste the, the heat on that one. Yeah, little. yeah, just a little bit. Going down, it, it uh, let it sit on the tongue a little bit, and it was definitely a little bit hotter than, than one and two mm-hmm. for sure. Okay. Chris, how about you? Three or four? Flavor-wise? Four, uh, three. Okay. Nose wise, four. And a lot of it is because, and I know the proof, so I can't give an unbiased opinion, but yeah. it's, I, I prefer three from a flavor standpoint. Four tastes a little more subtle, even though it's probably not. Um, it, it, in my opinion, it's a little sweeter. Okay. You guys want to tell me, I, do you like one better than the other out of three and four? Or do you like them the same? I definitely liked four on the nose. Okay. Smelled subtle, sweeter. There was a, there was, there was something there that I really enjoyed smelling about. Mm-hmm. And then when I tasted it, I was kind of like, okay. Three was more my style. Okay. Okay. Ryan? I liked four better than three in nose and taste. I'm with you. By, That's, by a mile. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. That's, and and uh, you guys ready for the reveal? Mm-hmm. Let's see it. So what do you know about bourbon? What's the, the bourbon that you think of when I say hard to get? Probably like the uh, Eagle Rare, Blanton, stuff like that. Maybe a lot of stuff out of Buffalo Trace. Okay. Yep. So... Number three is Weller Weller Antique 107. Okay. Hard to get, mm-hmm. hard to find. Number four is $35 a bottle, sits on the shelf all liquor day. liquor store you go long. to. Interesting. That's Maker's Mark cast strength. And I do that, that comparison a lot with people because for that very reason, they chase this like crazy. They're going to pay, you know, 60 bucks, 50 to 60 bucks retail mm-hmm. or – over a hundred bucks on secondary, and that one just sits on the shelf looking mm-hmm. pretty at thirty five dollars. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And I think Maker's Mark gets a bad rap, maybe not a bad rap, but gets a. They've got some fantastic products. They do, and they're a weeded bourbon, so these are both weeded bourbons. Uh, Maker's Mark being one ten, one oh seven for the Weller, so very similar there. So I always think that's a fun comparison to do with younger guys getting into bourbon, not in age, but in experience in bourbon yeah um and uh because out of the shoot most bourbon people go i want you know weller and i want buffalo trace and i want mm-hmm. you know whatever i can get that's allocated and they spend a lot of time and effort trying to find those things when things like maker's mark sits on the shelf and mm-hmm. right you just said not well, that you just liked it better yeah. you liked it a lot better. oh yeah much yeah. better much yeah. better. I mean, wild turkey sits on the shelf mm-hmm. yeah yeah so how I, about you thinking about it now i'd Got a couple bottles of Maker's Mark sitting on my Do you? bar cart. Oh yeah. So you and you ended up liking make the the Weller better, which I is did. fine. Yeah. But what you did say that I thought was curious, you liked two, which was the single barrel from Four, Four Roses. Roses, better than three. Yeah, I'm. I almost quite can't put my tongue on it, but it was <laughs> just something about it. Something, yeah, something caught my my attention, and I just maybe it was a, it was a smoother taste or a smoother smell. Mm-hmm. And I, it just, obviously, it, it was, I liked it enough for it to stick with me as we went on to three and four. Okay. So, but my point again would be, this is on the shelf all the time. Right. So if you, you go, I liked Weller, and we all like Weller, 
But this you can get all the time. This you're never going to find. At least you know something now that you go, right. I can get this on the shelf all the time. I can get this on the shelf all the time. And if you ever see a bottle of that, by all means, buy it. Why not? But don't, to me, giving you advice from people who've been in it a while, don't just waste your time trying to find those things. Yep. Enjoy. There's so much good bourbon out there. Okay, you guys ready to up the proof a little bit? Yeah. Let's all go right. for it. Let's put uh, some more things in our glass, and we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. We got three pours in our glasses. And Chris, this one, you're actually blind on this mm -hmm. one. So we're going to see what you think. So uh, three different uh, pours. We've got, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to remember what I poured here. So we've had four roses. Mm -hmm. We've had Buffalo Trace. Maker's Mark. We had Maker's Mark. I don't think we've had a Buffalo Trace. Yeah, that's uh, Weller. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. And we had Old Forester. Okay, so we've had those four distilleries so far. Now we're going to have three different distilleries. So we'll see. It's going to be slightly different profile and, um, well, slightly or maybe more than slightly. You guys can tell me what you think. Yeah. But let's drink through these, and then you guys uh, tell me. What, well, let's, let's do this first. Same, same procedure as we did last time. Let's nose them first. Okay. Tell me your favorite on the nose, and then we'll sip through them, and, and you guys tell me. One thing I like to do is... When you look at them in a the light, is there any of them that uh, stand out to you as far as color? Because the thought would be... Number two is definitely darker. Yeah, so what yeah. does that tell you? As a bourbon drinker, you would think what? Uh, it's... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I, so what it yeah. should tell you, not, not always the case, but most of the time it is, it's going to be aged longer. Okay. Because the darker the color, you know, it's on that charred barrel, mm -hmm. the longer it sits on that barrel the more it's absorbing more from the characteristics of that barrel. And it's going to okay. darken it up because you know, when bourbon's first made what they call white dog, mm -hmm. it looks like moonshine. It's mm. crystal white, clear. I, I have a white dog. I can show you. Do you have a white dog? I you do. need to grab that and let them see what it looks like. Hang on. Okay. So white dog is just clear liquid. This is bourbon mm -hmm. made with the bash bill that qualifies it as a bourbon, but it has no color on okay. it at all. No aging at all. Just no, no, no barrel bottle. integration. Yeah. So, so how long, how long does it sit like that then? Well, you, you have to be at least two years. Well, okay. to be a bourbon, to be a straight bourbon, it has to be two years. To be a bourbon, you can... So this is White Dog. Wow. What, it doesn't look like bourbon, does it? <laughs> it really so does. So that's what it looks like after it's distilled. That's the distillate right there. Does, that, does every distillery call it White Dog, or is that their... Most do. Okay. There might be an off one that doesn't. They came up with some other creative marketing name for it, but most call it White Dog. So... Let, let's get back to, do you guys know what makes a bourbon a bourbon? Here's this crazy saying that everybody says. Bourbon's a whiskey, but not all whiskey's a bourbon, right? Mm -hmm. Bourbon's 51% corn in the mash, correct? Yep. It's got to have at least 51% corn in the mash. Did mm -hmm. you know that, Cameron? I did not. So that's the grain. So obviously this is a grain spirit. Yeah. The four main grains that are used to make it are primarily corn. Mm -hmm. And then you have rye is typically mm -hmm. the second grain. Mm -hmm. Then you can use wheat. And then most of them have a percentage, a lower percentage of barley in there. Gotcha. And usually it's either the corn rye barley, corn wheat barley is what you would make okay. a weeded versus a what we call a standard bourbon. Okay. Gotcha. There are some that would have the name when you see four grain. Mm -hmm. That means all four all grains. Four. Is that, it, now, does that mean that's 25% each grain? No. It has to be, to have has to be 51% okay. corn to be a bourbon. Okay. But if so it's just could, a four grain whiskey, it could be any percentage. If, yeah, and then okay. it's just a whiskey. Okay. It's no longer a bourbon unless it has that fifty one percent. But typically, you would see, I mean, not typically, but at least fifty one percent. But mm -hmm. a lot of times, it's more than that. Okay, seventy percent uh, mm -hmm. corn, ten percent wheat, fifteen percent uh, uh, barley, barley or okay. rye, and then a little bit of barley. Usually, barley is not going to be that much. Okay, so gotcha. barley is usually five to maybe 12%, mm -hmm. okay. something like that. It's not a huge, it's a balancing kind of grain in there to mellow it out, round it out a little bit. Okay. So that's that's what makes it a bourbon. So when you see color, first indication would be darker, means it's been on the, in the barrel, barrel longer. longer, which tells me it's probably got it's, more age on it. Okay. Okay. So nose through these. Any, any Have you done that already, guys? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. You have a favorite, Chris? Number two. Is number two your favorite? Is it just because it's the darkest one? <laughs> no. No. Um, 
it 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 feels a little more on the nose than number one. Okay. Um, they seem very similar. Okay. It seems hotter. But I'm still going back between one and three. You know, bourbons in general have a similar, a lot of similar character uh, characteristics. So really what you're doing is picking out the nuances of mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. bourbons because you always get that, you know, brown sugar and the, the baking spices and the honey and the vanilla. And those are common things you're going to. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as a new guy in bourbon, when you're with your friends, you just throw those out. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of honey and, and vanilla on that one. And people go, yeah, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know? yeah. But it's picking up the other things. <clears throat> and fruit, you know, cherry is, yeah. a, is, a, is a profile that people will get a lot on, on bourbon. My favorite <clears throat> on the nose is number three. It's a lot more subtle than the other two. So your favorite on the nose is number three? Mm-hmm, for okay. sure. Number, and number two is great. It's just a little almost too much, just too much okay. pop. And the interesting thing is when you look at these three is if you compare it to wine, mm-hmm. color – can play more of a, a role in wine, knowing the difference between the wine than it can, like looking at these three. Yeah, for varietal. Right. What kind of right. wine mm-hmm. do I have? Right. Yeah. Um, but I would say a, a similar type thing would be in wine as it changes color. If you poured a white wine and you could tell it was getting darker in color, you'd go, that has a lot of age on it. Mm-hmm. If it's a red wine, getting that kind of lighter it's color, lighter. it's in that wine. table, mm-hmm. that water table on top, mm-hmm. that that copper kind of you go, it's got some age on it. Yep. So kind of, there's a lot of parallels I think between wine and whiskey, which is what gravitated me to whiskey mm-hmm. as a wine guy, mm-hmm. which I thought was really cool. Okay, nose favorite, go around a horn, Chris. You said number two, two, number three by a mile, by a mile, not even close. Yeah, no, okay, I really enjoyed number three. Okay, I'm gonna say number three. It was. A lot sweeter, yeah. Way. There's something it just wasn't yeah. so didn't have so much pop to it, and that may be because we're both you know new to it. We like the kind of the sweetness on back, yeah. kind of the yeah. kind of the ones that don't hurt so bad. <laughs> and what's funny, you guys need to keep a note or make a mental note. Try to remember kind of what you think about these profiles mm-hmm. today, because in three years or, or two years, you know, you're going to come back and taste through some of these product lines and go, okay, my, you know, see how you've changed, mm-hmm. how you mm-hmm. what you like, what you don't like, because it will happen. Can my wife even nosing through? She's just a nosy person. Okay, I'm going to say this is going to sound crazy. You going with one? No, my favorite nose is two. Uh, it, it's very close between two and three. Mm-hmm. Very I, I close. Agree. I agree. Uh, but as far as nose, two two wins out for me. All right, let's uh, let's go through the palate okay. and. Sip on them, see what you guys think. So do you guys have a question related to bourbon that you want answered? That you don't know. I'm sure I do, but I can't think of it. You don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you now know the difference between small batch, single barrel, so let me ask you this about small batch. What when you hear that's a small batch bourbon, what's the first thing you think, Cameron? Uh for me it's uh I guess a smaller pour out of one bigger barrel. So you're getting a, then, a, a, a so it should be special. It's a smaller yeah, amount. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that yeah, what so you, to me, yeah, when I hear small batch, I think limited. They made a yep. smaller, you know, portion of a, I guess a, a bigger barrel, and they set it aside, and they made us you know a smaller batch. Okay. Just so you know, and that's what I thought, Chris. Is that what you thought when you first got into bourbon? That's exactly what I thought. I remember going to a bourbon shop or a liquor store and seeing the bourbon aisle and seeing something that said small batch, and I went, oh, "That's I what I want." I should yeah. pay money for that. This know. is a great deal. Uh, just to let you know, it's one hundred percent not true. <laughs> Blend. Uh, gotcha. A small batch can have 10,000 barrels that all had six ounces left in it, and they just put it all into one so, big vat and then put it in bottles. So it's a smaller batch of ingredients in a way? No. It's well, a little bit from a bunch of different barrels. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, if you look at wine, you get a bottle of wine and it says Napa Valley. Mm-hmm. Or you get one that may say 
California. If it says California, those grapes can be sourced anywhere in California. Gotcha. It's a blend of the entire all of that. state. Okay. If it's Napa Valley, all those grapes literally came from that particular valley. And okay. then you go in even more specific to, let's say, Rutherford or Oakville or Stagsley District, where it's from a smaller portion of that same valley. Gotcha. So, so then, Chris is saying that the more you narrow it down, you're concentrating to that. Yeah. The assumption should be, and, and, and it should be a fact, that the quality is going to improve. Gotcha. So, so with bourbons, it, it would be... The, uh, like you said, a little bit left over from the bigger barrels, from the bigger batches. Well, just from barrels, not okay. necessarily left over, but it's it, it's it could just be. it could be you know okay. whereas that, single barrels, one barrel, this is this is X, made up X, from so X parts X of, barrels, of X correct. amount of barrels. That's right, yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah, just the uh, master uh, distiller said to make something. Yeah, I need fifty barrels of this and twenty barrels of that, and I had one barrel left over, so I'm gotcha. throwing it in this, and then mm -hmm. same thing. However many times, it just gotcha. It can it could be a small batch, could be just what's left of. I mean, because they're producing so much of this, it's still yeah. going to be lots of barrels. But instead of being just a hundred, it could be ten thousand. It seems you know? like. Small batch is like one of those buzzwords. It's gonna grab it is. That's going to grab yeah. people. It's like, ooh, yeah. that's exclusive. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's exactly right. That's, that that's, probably, the, that's yeah. probably the point of yeah. doing it. I yeah. think yeah. They, they market it that yeah. way. Yeah. Somebody's a genius, right? Yeah. They figured it out. Same with uh, Weller Special Reserve. Yeah. 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 And it's just their regular 90, 90 proof. 90 proof, yeah. $23 a bottle. Yeah. And you think it must be special and a great deal and, at 23 bucks. And it's bucks. great, but it's not the best and bourbon that I have. for some reason, it's hard to find because people buy it. In other parts of the country. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Where I, where I buy my liquor, it's on the special, just came in, you better buy it now because it's going fast shelf. Yep. yep. So, so my next question, Rob, was what's the difference between a special and a small batch? Nothing. Okay. So Weller Reserve is a batched whiskey as well. It's not They don't call barrel. it small batch. They call it special, special reserve. reserve. It's still okay. a batched whiskey. Mo most gotcha. of them are. Just like uh, the uh, one we had from Old Forester, which is a Cooper's Craft. It's a... It's a batched whiskey. You know, it's not a single barrel whiskey. It's it's multiple barrels blended together. So, and mo, you know, for the longest time, most and, and even today, most whiskeys are that way. It's easier to make something because most barrels don't come out the way you want, mm. and you have to you get one that's sweeter, one that's a little bit more tart or something. And you got to blend them together to kind of get that profile. Maybe it's eighty percent of this one and thirty percent of this one, and you blend it together and you go, "That's what I like." Mm -hmm. So blending is a huge part of making good whiskeys. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but whiskey is kind of the blanket term for everything. And you got your bourbon, your rye, your four grain, your scotch. I mean, there's scotch, a lot. Yes, that, that all falls under that Irish. Umbrella. Yep. Mm -hmm. So wh whiskey is just kind of a blanket term, whereas like wine is your blanket term. Yeah, whiskey's kind of. If you say a grain oil. spirit uh -huh. made from grains, okay. it's a whiskey. Okay. So if it's made from the agave plant, now mm -hmm. we're talking tequila, tequila or yeah. mezcal, things like that. Mm -hmm. So whiskey is just what, and then the specific type of whiskey is scotch is. It's from Scotland. Yep. It's got to be from that region, mm -hmm. the way they make it. Mm -hmm. Ireland, Irish whiskey has her. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, if it's, if it's a scotch type of whiskey, meaning it's more malt and barley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in, outside of Scotland, you just call it a, a malted whiskey or a single malt mm -hmm. whiskey or something like that. American that single malt. In, I mean, there's a lot of that here in Texas. Here in Texas. Doc mm -hmm. makes a bunch of that. Yep. So, all right. Back to these three pours. We, we said on the nose, you two boys liked three best. Mm -hmm. Me and Chris, I think we, we're, we agreed two. Mm -hmm. So, now we can start tasting them. Or have you tasted them yet? I tasted okay. one. Okay. This is where the rubber hits the road right here when you get it on your palate in the finish. And, and to me, the three pours that you have in front of it, we'll reveal them once we're done. They're all fantastic pours. Mm -hmm. and, and today, anytime you judge good whiskeys against each other, there's one that you go, I like, like you said earlier, this one's way better. I like it way better. Mm -hmm. But if I poured the other one for you on a night where you didn't have the comparison, exactly. you'd be like, this is fantastic. Oh, yeah. But when you compare. Like I have, in this whole tasting, I haven't had anything bad. Yeah. But whenever you're putting them side by side. You compare. Yeah. 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 So. A lot of times we'll do blinds and, and you taste something and you go, man, I drank that last week and I thought it was fantastic, but tonight I'm going, not so much, because yeah. you're comparing it to yeah. really yeah. good. Yeah, so just remembering that. Because one on the palate is absolutely delicious. 
Nose wasn't my favorite, but on the palate, delicious. I liked one. The 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 smell wasn't quite there for me, but the taste I could to be fair, I could mm-hmm. in a way tolerate it, but it was nice. I liked it. How was the heat? The meaning the proof? Was it too hot on your palate? No. Okay. Not not, not one not tasted over. lower proof than the other two. Okay. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Oh, you went through all three. You, I, did, I, went through I, all I have three. tasted all three. Um, I went through all three. Just speaking on one. I get a lot of I, cherry on one. Fruit on that one. I can I can smell it a little bit. Like it, okay. now that you Sometimes say, trigger words. Yeah. 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 Now that, say whenever it, you said banana or when you said yeah. cherry, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah that's, I could definitely pick that up. And I don't know yeah. if I'm actually picking it up or if I'm just subliminal. It, it's, I, I don't know. There's, there's some discussion about that, that the compound that you would get in cherry or the compound that you might get in vanilla is a compound that's found in some yeah. wines or whiskeys. I don't know how true that is. I always go back to the old statement of it's just you, you had that kind of smell, whether it be an apple pie or something like that, that triggers that memory, that kind of smell. It could be burnt rubber. Sometimes you'll get that or whatever it might be. And that's, that's what you call out is what I'm getting. There's no wrong answer is my point. Okay, so have you tasted through all three? Mm-hmm. Twice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've only done once. Taste them. What I like to do is taste them one way and then come back the opposite. Way. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm kind of oddball. I went one, two, three, three, one, two. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you do that for a reason? No, not in particular. Okay. I didn't um, know if you were well, well, I guess maybe, maybe I, I, I to be fair, I, I don't think I, I preferred two. You don't, don't prefer to? No. So you pulled it out. Yeah. Uh, I okay. think I, after one and three, or I, I went through once, one, two, three. I preferred one and three the most. Probably three the mo- uh, was my favorite. Okay. And then going back through again, I, I kind of remembered like, hey, two, maybe not maybe not up my alley. Yeah. Two, two is, not your jam. Two is right. the highest right. proof of these three, I, I believe. I like where Ryan's going like yeah, that. Okay. Two, like two is my favorite. Two is very noticeable. The okay. Higher proof. I like that. Okay. That's okay. Two is my favorite. Three is my favorite nose. One, I think, maybe my favorite taste. And I'm, again, I'm going blind. So I have yeah. no idea what these are. But yeah, two, I, I would bet money on that it's the higher proof of the three. How much you want to bet? Uh, I'm, I'm not that <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, I'll, I'll throw a dollar in the pot. Can we bet on how much you take out of my garage to go home? Uh, no, I, I, my truck bed's full. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? For the, are, you, are you done? You need one, one more I'm time through? For, Everybody got I think through? I'm ready. No, I'm good. I'm ready to know what we're I want to know what so we're wait, dealing call with. So your, call your favorite. Do you have a favorite? Three mm-hmm. nose, one taste. You got to go overall. One. One would be one, your overall one, favorite? just because the, 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 the taste is what I'm after. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm drinking bourbon to drink, not smell it. You know? Yeah. Right. I went. I liked overall the one smell and the taste followed each other more more closely than than three did. I was a big fan of three. So that's your second is three. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so you're uh, one, one, three, one three two. two. Yep. One okay. three two. Um, I'm two three one. Two yeah. three one. I'm one mm-hmm. three two. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh. I'm one three two as well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I know what they are. But I'm being not not letting the label. The label doesn't matter to me. Okay, um, you ready for the reveal? Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah. It. Number one, we don't have the bottle on the table. Okay, but it's rare breed. Okay, okay, yeah, and and, and that's that. Wow, makes sense. That was my that was yeah. with what I like to drink. Ironically, that was my third. Yeah, ironically, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Number two, and Ryan, great job. This comes in at 136.6. I knew is that. Nice. I had not had anything that's that stout yet. That's why I like yet. that one. Yeah, that's, that's, why that, that's why that one made me more like of a man. <laughs> How many <laughs> chest hairs popped out on that oh, one? Oh, at least four. <laughs> at least four today. Okay. Uh, that so that, that's the big boy that I put in this one, and it yeah. was noticeable. So I was wondering if it yeah. would yeah. be noticeable, and you guys uh, picked up on that. That's pretty do impressive. Do I win that since I picked it? <laughs> As your favorite? <laughs> no, as the bottle. Did you pick it in the Do I get to keep the bottle? He wins the bottle. No, that, and that's a 12-year. So if you look at the color on that. That's why it's so much darker. That's why it's so much darker. And when you look at. Uh, no, I want to know if I win the bottle. Chris, what's, what's Chris have we not had Elijah Craig before? Barrel here? proof. No. 
You might have had the 94. Do you have the 90? Ironically, I have, I have a barrel proof. I have not opened it yet. Okay. Because that was when I pulled up the specs and Rob that's told me I, that they yeah. had one and okay. he, I bought it from him. That's one of my guys. That's three? Right there. Yeah. 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 So this is your third one, that which is uh, the Knob Creek from Jim Beam. Mm -hmm. um, that is 120 proof, nine year. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, I've got yeah. some pics of these that one time when we get back together again. I'll bring over a bunch of 12, 14, 15, 16-year-old picks of these mm -hmm. at 120 proof that will blow you away. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're one of my favorite things to drink. They don't have them anymore. They stopped that program. But they are absolutely delicious. And Jim Beam makes some great products that a lot of people don't know about. I don't know if you guys knew Knob Creek is Jim Beam. I did not. I, I didn't and know I, that. And I love Knob Creek. I have a nine yep. and a nine single barrel, just like that one. Yeah. So yep. where yep. did they two get of my the name Knob? Does that have anything no. to do with Book or No or anything in reverse? Or I don't know. Knows? Good question. I will tell you that, you know, if you want to go through, Jim Beam has a lot of product that's not Jim Beam mm -hmm. labeled. Mm -hmm. So Knob Creek being one of them. Bookers, obviously, being one of them. Uh, is Little Book theirs? Little Book is theirs. Okay. Most of them with a B in it. Have you ever had Baker's? Have you heard of the Bakers? Bakers the eight, makes eight, a, the eight year, eight, eight year. Oh, anything over fantastic. eight years is fantastic. So Bakers is some of them. Basil Hayden. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of Basil Hayden? I've heard of Basil Hayden. That's their product. Every never buy Basil Hayden. You know why, right? I don't know why. No matter what they make, they always proof it to eighty. Okay. So I don't want an eighty proof. You're you're past that. You're drinking, you know, one fifteen, one twenty yeah. stuff. So what you're doing that. You're mixing it. What would you expect yeah. to pay for a bottle of this, of this Knob Creek? Do you know what that runs? About 55 bucks. Okay, I overpaid for it. How much did you pay? 69 That's not too bad. You're in a small store in a small town. Mm -hmm. His cost yeah. may be different. I bought that than, one uh, in Jacksboro, Texas. I bought that one in Wimberley. Now, you another solid bottle is a nine-year, 100-proof that they make, mm -hmm. 35 bucks, and it's absolutely fantastic. That's what, I think that's what I have. I have I have two Knob Creeks. I have okay. their standard nine, 100 proof, and I use it in old fashions all the time. And yeah. it's, it's probably my favorite for the old fashioned. Okay. So you guys enjoy those? Oh, yeah. Okay. I have a just a fun pour of a very exclusive bottle okay. that I want you guys to try okay. and see what you think about it. Okay. And then we'll, we'll close out the show. Okay. You guys ready? We'll pour those, and we'll be right back. Okay. Right. We're going to nose it first. Yeah, knows it first. We're back, and uh, I poured what is a special bottle. Uh, hard to find. Can't find it. Can't find it. And Tried. let these guys try it and see what they think. Is Tried it on the table? Are we? Do we have any I'm idea? Not giving you any hints. Nope, no man. hints. Tried okay. to buy one from Rob. Hard pass. Look at him trying to go. Is it on the table? Hard <laughs> what have we had? What haven't we had? It's trying to eliminate. It's not on the table. It's not on the table. Nope. How do you, how do you guys like it initially on the nose? It's fine. Okay. For, fine. For then me, blow you away. No, it doesn't blow me away by being. For it's, me, it's it's, it's, not it's a it's a like at first I can I like it and then and then it bites me. Okay. And it's like so. What does hey, that tell you? What do you it's higher proof? Maybe okay. it's very dark. Bingo, dude. Okay. Bingo. Okay. Good Good job, so I'm Cameron. learning a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So when it starts to bite, like you go, okay, can't can't, me, can't keep my nose in too long. I'm really curious. It's got some Ryan. probably proof on there. Huh? I'm really curious about Ryan liking this. Well, okay, let's. I like the nose. It is very dark, so it's been aged for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as you've learned. Yes, in this podcast, <laughs> picking up on knowledge. That I, I, I love that he picked it up and went, "Ooh, that's dark. It's got some age on it." That's oh, right. Okay. right. What yeah. he said. I went, mean, "Okay, good job, Ryan." Smart yep. cookie. Yeah, he is. I never would have known that until, he until I came here. Yeah. But now that I think of it, think back of it, like. It yeah, makes sense. Know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it. I've had multiple whiskeys and, and whatnot, and it, it all comes together now. Yeah, if you I, see something very light, uh, you go, okay, that's a young whiskey. Yeah. And, you know, the, the theory is the older the better. Mm -hmm. And it's it's okay. It's just it's not a, an absolute theory, but it's uh, pretty solid. But uh, and with wine, there comes a point where that wine is in its prime, and then it law of diminishing returns. Yeah, deteriorates. absolutely. Uh, cool. But whiskey, I think, has a, a sweet spot of really good bourbons in that like six to nine, six to ten year range. Is that six to nine in the cask or in the bottle? No, no, no. Bottle doesn't age anymore. You're correct. It's done. Correct. So it's always in the barrel. Okay. How it's aged six to nine years is a really good sweet spot. So whereas wine will age 
Wine's a in living thing. Yes. Yeah, once once yeah. bourbon's been done in the barrel, because mm-hmm. the barrel's what gives it the influence. So it, it doesn't matter okay. how long it sits in that bottle. It's it doesn't matter. Taste the same. Wine can, can continue to change. Yeah, yeah. You, you okay. can get a bottle from 1960. Okay, and those are called dusties, and guys will buy those. And it's the same. You know, only thing that's different from like a 1970s wild turkey versus today is their process for the distillate. Okay. The distillate is different. Okay, so. They had different stills back then. They had different barrels, different warehouses, whatever the case might be. So that's going to taste different than what you might get in modern day okay. bourbon. Now, gotcha. the wild turkey, I know your Buffalo Trace has your Weller, your Eagle Rare, stuff yep. like that. Does wild turkey have different no. different lines like that? Well, or is it just wild turkey 101, have wild turkey rare, rare breed, breed wild long turkey. branch? But they don't have. But they're all they all different all names. No. It's all no, wild well, turkey. Long Branch is Long Branch. Okay. Which is a Matthew McConaughey celebrity brand. Okay. okay. Um, all right. And then right. they have right. some <laughs> other products that are wild turkey related that don't, may not say wild turkey. Okay. Um, uh, they also have so Jimmy Russell. Any idea who he is? Mm-hmm. Russell's oh. Reserve. I, I've I've seen it. So Jimmy Russ. Russell is been with Wild Turkey for something like going on seventy years. Okay, uh, he's their master distiller. Was his son Eddie has taken over the last probably fifteen twenty years, something like that. Maybe not quite that long, but for a while. And Eddie's had a big influence on a lot of the stuff they've done over the last couple of decades. Um, but those two guys are the Russell in the the Wild Turkey okay. lineup of the Russell's That's Reserve single barrel Russell's Reserve. Yeah, there's a lot Fantastic. of good stuff on that lineup too. Okay. Uh, but then you have like wild turkey traditions, and you have mm-hmm. wild turkey the Decades, master keep lineup, the which keep falls line, right. Yeah, which master that's that keep. Blue, that's that blue box that I have in there. Yeah, okay. that's the master. I'm pretty sure you bond. A, that you'll you kill the bottle of Russell at my house because I have an empty bottle. Yep, you do. Yep. So, um, yeah, wild turkey doesn't. So Buffalo Trace has Weller, which was its uh-huh. own. You know, from the old Stitzel Weller uh-huh. distillate, which was a really good juice. Then they have Eagle Rare, which used to be owned by um, Seagram's okay. <laughs> uh, okay. back in the day. And then they have other brands like E.H. Taylor, which uh-huh. is Colonel E.H. Yep. E. Taylor. Uh, so they, they've just uh, – Sazerac acquired. owns acquired. Buffalo Trace. Okay. So Sazerac has just kind of put all these together. So, so there's, there's very <coughs> few big distillers. They just have lots of different Four or five. branches out. That's why I gave you, you know, the Jim Beam – the Jim Beam, the Wild Turkey, uh-huh. the um, Four, Roses. Four Roses, the Weller. Uh, Old Forester, and the Weller. Yeah, yeah. Right. So which you is could Buffalo Trail. You know, you know you're, you're getting what is the base of these big distilleries big and names. figuring out what you like, and then you can kind of play with the different product lines okay. that they have. Okay. So those those little bottles, like the Bond and Lillard and the, the other From one. Wild Turkey. What's the other one? Is that Wild Turkey? Yeah, the other one is... W- uh, 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 Waffle. Um, Saffle. W. Saffle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Saffle's my favorite. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, 107 uh, so we tried the Bonded Lillard last night, the little bottle. That little bottle that I showed you and let you try? I don't, I don't. remember it, but yeah. yeah I've drank a lot of bourbon since then, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's dive into this glass, and we'll, we'll kind of finish up the I know what this episode is, with this. I've, I've been waiting for this since it came out and haven't had it. So tell me what you think about it when you nose it. And, Ryan, you kind of gave me those thoughts already. Uh, Cameron, what do you think about it on the nose? Yeah, so on the nose, it <laughs> – What happened, Ryan? That's, a, that, that's my review of it right there, <laughs> <laughs> those two co- the coughing. Yeah, on the nose, at, at the very beginning, it's – I can, in a way, tolerate it. it. It's nice and easy, and then it hits me. It's like – the spice, punch. yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a, there's a punch to it. There's you got to back off a little. Something about it. I'm like, Ooh. this one's Ooh. for this one's for the big boys that have been doing it for a while. Okay, know, well, know if you they... don't finish it, leave it there. I'll get it. Oh, I will. I was gonna say, I think Ryan <laughs> might finish that finish one. Mine. Yeah. You, you're gonna let Chris finish yours. I will probably pass it on. Really, I don't let know. Let me get another you... taste. I'll yeah, get another taste. Let your is. palate adjust. Oh, you've tasted it already. I, am I the only one that hasn't? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you haven't tasted it yet. First word that comes you, to mind when you drink it. Oh, Ouch. strong. Ouch. Okay. Strong. That, that's Ouch. my first word. I, Ouch. I feel it right underneath the buttons. Yeah. Throw some, well, throw some you hands know what we call that, right, in the, in the bourbon world? What's that? The Kentucky hug. Okay. okay. So when you get that little in your chest and you go, that kind of feels yeah. good, that's the Kentucky hug. I don't know if yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I would be the first word that I would throw in there. 
<laughs> yeah, I feel that. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's my first word. Yeah. Because you'll, you'll hear a lot of people when they get a, a bourbon that kind of warms the chest like that, mm-hmm. they'll describe it as that's a really nice Kentucky hug on that. I, I can see this. <laughs> well, this one is an, a another, tight Kentucky You keep giving yeah. me a little cough there, yeah, my exactly. man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Another first thought is when it's cold, you drink this and you're, okay, I'm warm again. Yeah. yeah. Let's go yeah. out playing the snow kind of thing. Yeah. Now it's, oh, it's, de- it's delicious. Fantastic. But it is painful like to yeah. get to that deliciousness. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe I went too big for the boys. No, no, no. I'm, I'm glad we did this, but it kind of it, put me in check. It said, hey, you're not there yet. It's yeah, 90 it's, degrees outside. And I'm it, yeah. It. It's yeah. also, for me, it's, in a way, I'm getting uh, spoiled with all these bourbons and whatnot, and what do I go to now? What do yeah. I go back to? No, it's, you go back to where we well, have been all night. Yeah, you we just go back drove to a Ferrari, but you don't get to keep it. You got to go back <laughs> yeah, to the, the test drive. This you is got to go back to the Ford. Now, and the now we got to go buy our own yeah, Ferrari. Right, we exactly. can't afford that. Right. So we get the you know the Toyota Corolla, yeah. and we this is, you know, make do. This is the only one that we've given you tonight that you're not going to find anywhere. Yeah. Everything else, there was a purpose about giving you these is because if you liked them, these are on the shelf all the time. I'm really anxious to The find only out other one, one would be the 107, which you it, – it, It's you accessible. Can, it's accessible, but people on gobble it up. It's yeah. kind of stupid why they gobble it up, but they the, do. The one that you're drinking now, you'll never see. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm anxious I'm, to find I'm, out what this yeah, one is. I was going to say, I'm, in, I'm okay, guys, interested to see – where it's from. And I want Ryan to see it after what I gave him last night. Yeah. Any guess on who you think the distiller might be? I had no, ch- no idea. Yeah, no no idea. Not a clue. Ryan, think about what I had you drink last night. See, last night we had Angel's Envy, mm-hmm. Rye, and mm-hmm. the Caribbean Rum Cast. That's, that's, yes. So are, is this an Angel's Envy? Nope. Okay, I I don't know. Okay, don't know. what else did I have you tried that you've never? What's the first? The other one that I did? you're just giving him the answer. <laughs> I'm really trying. I'm trying you're to walking help him, him through it. Over He's my here. son-in-law. I got to help him out. I'm just going to show you. You ready? I'm, I'm drinking a lot of bourbon since then, so man, I'm Let's fuzzy. See. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. Daniels. Jack Daniels. Okay. The Jack Daniels <laughs> Single Barrel Special Reserve. Okay. Now what, this what's is the proof on this. This is Coy Hill, one forty. Oh no wonder. No wonder <laughs> yeah. I, I ticked up a few degrees. Yeah. So this is a, a single barrel, uh, single uh, barrel barrel release from Coy Hill, high proof. I don't think it's a, a single barrel. I think I'm lying there. I tried to find that. I think it Rob is. Rob has better connections than me. So so what is it about this that makes it hard to find? It's a limited release. Once okay. a year. Is they in it once a year? No, this they, they they this is the only time they've ever released this one. So they have a lineup that they do the heritage release and different barrels. There was of special. a different rye that they did like once. That a year. was the one last year. Okay. That's not once a year. That was that one time. Okay, you got so that rye one time. This that, year you get this. That's a one bourbon, time. correct? Or is yeah, it, it's is a bourbon. That a rye? It's a bourbon. No, it's a bourbon. Okay. Well, what's the percentage of rye on that one? I don't know what the mash bill is exactly. Because it's very spicy. Yeah, it might yep, be a yep. little. It's, got, it's heavy rye. It's, it's a good heavy question. On the rye. Yeah. Well, and it could also be just the the proof Hot. at one forty. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. probably the heat. that's probably what's kicking me. Yeah. So does it? How long has that one been aged for? So it, it doesn't tell you the age statement, but you can figure it out. Yeah. So if you look here on the neck, it'll tell you. It'll tell you. I think when it went into the barrel, the barrel entry. Say what? Yeah. Probably and fifteen what, what, years. When did it go in the barrel? Twelve, uh, fifteen years. 20, uh, no, August third. No. Uh, 2012. So you're oh, looking wow. at so that's only a 10 year. Yeah. Okay. You say only, but 10 no. years is still pretty good. That's a long time. For I mean, as yeah. compared to like the Knob Creek Nine, it's it, it right. But where, like, what's special about this is where it's at. So Coy Hill is the highest elevated area on Tennessee on uh, Jack Daniels okay. property in Tennessee. Okay. So when you get higher heat, uh-huh. uh, it's going to take that right. Yeah, you're going to get more. Uh, Concentration. The water yeah. evaporate out. So think about, you know, as the heat expands and contracts with cold and hand, every year that they're in there, it's getting more okay. intense flavor. That's why, look how dark it is. Now, since yeah. the Jack Daniels is kind of unique in a, in that it's out of Tennessee instead of Kentucky, so they don't still call bourbon. It, it's bourbon. Do they still put bourbon it's, on the bottom? They don't, no. They, don't, they, they want to distinguish whiskey. themselves. It's bourbon. Okay, yeah. They so look at it. Tennessee whiskey, but it's Similarly yeah. aged to that. To that uh, nine-year Knob Creek. Look at so, the colors. So the Knob Creek was the darker one in the last round, right? No, Correct? that was Elijah Craig no, was the darkest. Okay, where's that? It looks that a lot let's, darker let's, than right here. Yeah, it's the, the, it's the temperature fluctuations that yeah. increase. This is a 12-year. That's These two together. Less Those than a 10-year. And that's two more years on it. Yeah, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, the Jack Daniels looks and way darker. Yep. 
So and, and it's the temperature fluctuations of what you're saying, which affects and it the that elevation. Way. Yeah, the okay. hotter it is, the more you're going to kind of cook the whiskey, if you will, okay. in that barrel. So theoretically, in you know South Texas, if they made a bourbon, it would age faster. Yeah. So in in Texas, uh, you know, when they age bourbon, it's like a year or two. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it's, it's and cooking it's, whiskey yeah, along it's these hot. lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, that's what you're drinking. It's it's just it's was released uh, a it's few not, months ago. It's good. gone. Uh, oh, it was gone the day it came out. Yeah, and I, I was lucky enough to get a couple of bottles of this. So uh, I thought I'm I'm glad I got to try it. It's physically painful, but it is delicious. Yeah. Too. yeah. But in, but in two years, come back and we'll yeah. pour it again. Okay. Is it, and you'll go. Okay. How? So in in what way will it taste differently? Well, it's going to depend on your palate, obviously, mm-hmm. how you've adjusted okay. and how much you've been drinking. But my point in saying that is your palate's going to continue to grow and adjust. And it's like, like me and Chris drink that and go, yeah. I go, doesn't drink like a 140 proofer. That's no. pretty yeah. easy mm-hmm. on my palate. Where you two guys are going, that's pretty strong. Well, that's I mean, pretty hot. Yeah. That's yeah. stout <laughs> right there. But and so... Yeah, My point is, your palate's going to change, and when you can get over the heat, a lot of times when you drink right. bourbon, when you're drinking bourbon, the, your palate says it burns me. That's the f- yeah. initial response. Yeah. Yeah. And so it covers up all the flavor that's there yeah. because all it's doing is just like, at, ow. At some up. point, you beat the hell out of your palate, and, and it calls uncle. And it says, okay, I'm going to stop reacting this way because you're just yeah. going to keep giving me bourbon. And it doesn't react that way. Now all you get is the fruit and the honey and the vanilla. And you can really taste the profile of that bourbon. And acquire, so, it's an acquired taste. Yeah. It's just so, getting used to well, it. Yeah. So With wine, for example, when we first started drinking wine, there was a particular wine, I won't mention the name, had a rooster on the label. Um, <laughs> that was our go-to wine. We went to Napa as a group the first time. And after that, we started, our palate started changing and we're sitting there, a friend of mine and I are sitting there drinking wine and we're drinking that, that particular wine. And 30 minutes in, neither of us had touched it. Yeah. And I finally looked at him and said, I can't drink this anymore. He said, I can't either. Our palate had changed. Well, and mine has already done that because... We, we can't, it, it literally, and wine, it's probably, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, it can be more prolific and at the, than bourbon. Quicker? Quicker, yes. yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it can go faster. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I got a question, Rob. Yeah. The strongest thing in, in my, at my house is Eagle Rare. You know what proof that is? Off the top of my head, no, 90, I don't. 90? 90. Okay. So it's 10 degrees less than anything okay. you've drank today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that, that's kind of what my, well, my question was is how, in comparison from Eagle Rare to this Jack Daniels, 50 what, proof what points. Is, yeah. What, like, so it's obviously a lot stronger. It's going to be a little so, bit harder. He, he, so does it feel, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 33% stronger? Here, here's 40% the, stronger? Here's the way I would describe yeah. it to you that yeah. I think is a good way to, to kind of get you to go, I get it. If I give you a glass of Coke that's half full and you mm. taste that Coke, it tastes, you go, solid Coke, tastes like Coke, perfect. Right. And then I fill up the rest of the way up with water. What do you go? It's, it's Coke, I, but it's really, yeah, it's, I've lost a lot of the flavor. It's down the, in a way. So when you think about a, a, a bourbon, they always come out of the the barrel at whatever proof they come out of. Okay. And they never come out at 90. They, they typically, depending on the distiller, you have a, a barrel entry, a proof that you go in the barrel. Uh-huh. And it usually goes up from there because okay. we have the water that evaporates with the heat. So say barrel entry, the max it can be is 125 proof. Most distillers are somewhere between 110 and 115 to 120. Mm-hmm. You know, some go 125, most don't that might not be 100 but most probably don't um so if it goes in the barrel let's just say 115 even if it's on a lower tier after a few years it comes out it might be 117 118 Mm -hmm. now they need to make that whiskey down to 90 proof right because they want to create more volume yes they add all this water to it what does that do to your flavor yeah it takes it down a little bit takes it down a lot now i will give credit to 
Eagle Rare still has great flavor for it. There's some 90 to 100 I've never, whiskey never tried Eagle Rare. You've never tried Eagle Rare? No, I can't find see, it anywhere. See, I can't well, you have a guy it. who could pour you one. Yeah, that was... Well, I, I don't want to open up any Eagle Rare. Oh, you don't Rare. have any open? That's what, what, that's what he introduced me to. Yeah, see, I've never had an Eagle, Eagle Rare. Rare. No, I have, I've killed a bottle of Buffalo Trace, but I've yeah. never tried oh, yeah. Eagle Rare. Never have. Okay. Yeah, I wish I'd have known liquor that. liquor store in Bridgeport wants 80 bucks for it, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. no. If you need one, I can get you one. I can he, do that if you so, want one. So Chris got so, me a bottle. He gave me a bottle of uh, Eagle Rare for my wedding. Okay. <laughs> and Hold on. When did I give you that bottle? Uh, in 2020. When you blindsided me? A year ago. To uh, officiate it your wedding? It wasn't quite a blind. <laughs> it was, it was totally a blindside. Totally a blindside. Totally. But you officiated, and it went great. I will it say, did. it's one of the but funnest weddings I've been to. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> one thing that helps Eagle but, Rare, it's a 10-year bourbon. Okay. And so when it's 10-year, it used to be a single barrel. Mm-hmm. They stopped that. Now they batch it. But if you think 10-year, you think more time on the barrel, more flavor. So if you add water, now it had enough big, bold flavor that it still theoretically can be pretty good. Uh-huh. Think about a four-year-old bourbon okay. that didn't have as much time on the barrel that doesn't get that impact. Now you water that down to 90 proof, and you go, it tastes so, like water. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. question is... Now that we've had all these, at the end of the day, really amazing bourbons, yeah. how do I go back to the real world? How do I go? You back are in the to, real world. Yeah, we're in but the real world. But, we but how do I go back to? What you know? What am I going to drink every single day? What if I want to mix it? It do you, I? Yeah, it, well, the, I get here's the, here's my upon? rule for mixing: hundred proof or more. What's a bourbon you like at hundred proof? That's a great value in price. Your answer would be. Right? Uh, 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 Rare breed. Okay, well, you're going that's, a little bit. I thought you were going to say Wild Turkey 101. Yeah, Wild Turkey 101. Because that's great. a $25 I just, I just, yeah, or yeah, bottle. That's a, that's a cheap bottle yeah. of bourbon. So yeah. if you're going to mix something, that, you get great proof, great flavor, that's your old 20 some bucks. Bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. That so, and regular makers, your 90 proof makers. Yeah. But again, 90 proof as you mix, now you're losing yeah. flavor. So I want it to be 100 or more if I'm going to okay. mix. Okay. Yeah. So, so Wild so 101 is going to be your yeah. go to. So, so anything, so, so you said over 100 mix it? That's my rule. Okay. Because if you're, if you're taking a 90, again, as you add soda or anything to it, yeah. you're diluting you the flavor of the. So if yeah. I have a bigger boulder, like you do rare breed, mm-hmm. that's 116.8 mm-hmm. proof. Now you put a little soda in there, maybe it comes down to 100 yeah. versus gotcha. 90 that right. you're bringing down to 70. Right. Yeah. So I, I always mix higher proofs, not lower proofs. To bring proofs. it down. Okay. Because mm-hmm. okay. it keeps that flavor of the whiskey yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. more. But you're not losing anything, Cameron. I mean, everything that we drank through mm-hmm. today is on the shelf anywhere you want to go get it. That was the gotcha. point of this, is to show yeah. you there's really good bourbons out there on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. This is the only one, this one we had at the end, and the Weller to a point. But you both agreed that you liked the uh, Four Roses and the Maker's Mark better yeah. than that oh, Weller. Yeah, those, on the I, shelf. I killed a bottle of Maker's 46 cast strength not knowing what I had, and yep. I wish I would have savored it more rather than putting it old-fashioned. Yep. Yeah. And honestly, even me, the 107, yeah, if I see it, I'll buy it. But I'm I don't not, go chase it. I'm not searching it. Yeah. Yeah, Not with I, everything else we've tried. There's so much good stuff it, out there. It's kind of crazy. To, like, after having all these uh, bourbons, the Four Roses and the Makers has, they've stood out to me. Yeah. yeah. Out of all four it, that we've it, tried, that's the one I'm going to go, that's right. what I'm going to go looking for. It, good. Is the me, Makers cast strength and then the Four Roses single. Yeah. Single and bourbon. I would highly recommend, to Chris's point, Get a bottle of the small batch select, not just a small batch for thirty two bucks. Get the small batch select. You'll spend fifty five bucks. You're yeah, gonna absolutely enjoy it. One hundred four proof. Yeah. You're gonna love it. I guarantee. Your you. your daughter has me cut off on buying bourbons, but once I get released again, that's what I'm gonna go looking for. <laughs> she takes the leash Ryan, off. When, yeah, let the I big know dog what run. she spend on craft stuff. Yeah. Um, well, now it's spending on baby stuff. Hold on, so. hold on, hold on. I will take your dad's furniture back, but I get to buy a bottle of this. <laughs> Use your leverage. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's part of marriage, the experience, knowing yeah. how to position things. I shouldn't say that with my wife sitting right here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my wife buys a case at a time. I don't buy a case at a time. Yeah. Thankfully, she just walked by and didn't hear me. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you had a good time. I enjoyed I having you guys. I, I this has been fun. too good of a time. Yeah. This yeah. has been yeah. fun. Thank it's always fun to me. get was... younger guys getting into bourbon and just kind of, uh, you know, Go through a little bit and let you guys explore. It's a it's a deep rabbit Abs- hole. Absolutely, so. I was I was a little nervous to begin with, um, having not had all the experience. Yeah, as Rob and Chris have, but now that I know, you know, kind of more what they drink and what 
in a way. What well, your palate likes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I like. Yeah. I know. Your, your palate will change. And yeah. for those of you out there that have never had, I mean, just enjoy the journey. It's all yeah. about the journey. Yeah. You you can read, read Wikipedia all day long, but that's not going to give you. You need no. to taste it. Yeah. You're going to have to get get together with friends. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, There's have that. wines, especially when you come down here. When me and Chris have a selection of things that mm-hmm. we can continue to have you guys try yeah. and keep yeah. kind of would, exploring through whiskeys. Yeah, I would love to try. I would love to do a tasting of wine. Yeah, well, we'll do that I, too. Uh, yeah. It's part of the show. I, oh, I know you're at the right show. place oh, know, for that. Yeah. I know so, you'll drink wine tomorrow. Um, we'll do that one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'd drive back tomorrow. Yeah. I would love to, uh, maybe in a year or so, we'll, we'll kind of get you guys yeah. back yeah. on and yeah. see kind of how the journey's been and yeah. where you are at that point uh, with bourbon and what you like and, and what you're what okay. you putting well, in your bar. Okay, the next one, Rob, is we're going to do a wine tasting with them. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would yeah. love that. I would, I, love I, that. I would enjoy that. I got so. one last question for you, yeah. Rob. What, as far as age goes, you know, you typically the younger crowd likes to mix and drink lower proof stuff, but... What is it? A what? What are your opinions on being younger and trying this more, I guess, rare stuff? What like? What do you? What are your thoughts on that? Rare or mixed? What are you talking? J- about? Just straight up rare, uh, on the rocks. Okay, I, so you're I not talking about rare stuff like the Koi Hill that you can't get. You're talking about right. drinking it exactly. Yeah. Neat. So what? Yeah. I know. The, I know. Thirteen years ago, whenever I was twenty advice. years old. I just wanted to get drunk. I didn't care what it tasted like. And yeah. now I'm enjoying tasting these. That, that's right. what I say. Most younger yeah. people, especially in college, you know, you drink for effect. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, a lot of people our age, me and you, Chris, back in school, college, you, you drink wild turkey 101 yeah. for effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, and then when you get into bourbon, you go, I'm not drinking 101. That, yes. that was the old college day. Yeah. But then you go, Wait, it's honestly it's about really, cost. really good. It's about cost yeah. and appreciating the, you don't want to waste it. Yeah. So you you a we're we're older, so we don't want to waste it's it. It's like your with a bunch of coke. versus your craft beer argument, and it's okay. literally okay. diving okay. into the deep end, saying, yeah. you know what, I'm going to try this with but, a whiskey stone or one ice cube, an ice cube, and see yeah. what happens. Well, and I I, do, I will touch on that. Adding a drop of water to a whiskey is not frowned upon. No, but I would say okay. it this, subtles it just so, a tad. Here's yeah. what you never want to do: put an ice cube in. Do you know why? It dilutes it. Because the water continues to melt, right? Mm-hmm. It dilutes the it. ice continues to melt unless you want an old fashioned water, water yeah. to if your. You want an old fashioned, so it's continuing to dilute it. Gotcha. So if you just put a drop and take a drink and go, nope, a drop, take a drink, nope, another drop and go, that's where I want it. Yeah. Now it's not changing anymore. Right. Okay. I get well, to that's enjoy that I whole whiskey. That yeah, okay. exact that proof, because all you're sense. doing is proofing right. it down right. when you add water. Okay. And a whiskey so. stone just kind of cools it off a little bit, but right. it's the same proof. And, and maybe I, and now, that if you were old have, fashioned, then you get the big cube. Yeah. So, so you your, maybe you know, to me, that or, may have an influence on how the tasting went today because I prefer the drinks to be colder. It, it may, do you know what colding does? It, does? The, the, the cold hides stuff. Yeah. So, okay. if I gave you an ice cold wine, you would drink it and go, mm-hmm. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Because anything cold contracts all the flavor that's in there, all the, okay. so it hides it, it covers oh. it up. So as it warms up to room temperature, or a temperature that it should be served at, right. now those things can kind of bloom and go. So if you pull a red wine out, what's your rule, Chris? Pop it and wait what? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. It's okay. a twenty minute rule. Literally, if you buy, if you get a white wine and it's in the fridge, you pull it out, wait twenty minutes. Which unfortunately, you, my wife and her friends don't. They finish it in twenty <laughs> minutes. Exactly. Now is it better? If, if it's a red up, wine, know, it's in the wine fridge. You pull it out. You let it wait twenty minutes to warm up. Okay. Now it's better to decant it in that time or leave it in the bottle. You don't need to decant it unless it's an older wine. Uh-huh. You really don't. Now you can get one of those Here. that sticks in there that can aerate it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So do you know what decanting is, right? You, you pour it in the let for it what breathe, purpose? Let it yeah. breathe. Well, decanting is more for getting rid of the sediment. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. That's, in a wine. that's really, and you need one of those little aerating to get, get, get the air on. Get the that's air all you want. Yes. Here's what I would say. Pour it in your glass and let it enjoy yes. the wine as it changes in your bit. glass versus why pour it in something mm. and it's already, you've lost all that experience. And if there's of sediment that left, changes. then just drink wash it. it out and drink it. go next. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're so good. I've got another wine question for okay. you guys. With a bigger bottle, with a larger bottle. A big format, a, magnum or exactly, something. Exactly, a magnum, okay. yeah. yeah. As far as storing goes, you know, it's a wine you know you're not going to drink for a while. Special occasion. Right. Storing, I know 
from what I know, I know you store it, should store it horizontally and rotate it periodically. Yeah. Oh, I did well, not know that. What, uh, it, you where don't am have I wrong? to. Okay. The biggest enemy to a wine is temperature. Okay. You don't want to go from hot to cold to hot to cold. As long as you keep it at a regular temperature, it doesn't matter if the cork is wet. Yes, every now and then you can lay it down, in my opinion. Okay. But that's not essential. It's the temperature. And don't let sunlight hit it. No don't sunlight. Put it don't window. put it on top of your fridge right. and let it sit there. It needs to be in a on, cold, on the relatively dark place or in your bar cart, in away from everything, okay. and let it just hang out. Do its thing. Yep. Yes. Gotcha. If yes. you have room to lay it down, you can lay it down. Yeah, but fine. if you don't, okay. it doesn't matter. Chris's point, just wet the cork. Right. Right. I mean, I, I just bought that. Magnum right there, and I'm going to let it sit there for a little while, and eventually I'll let it lay down. Yeah. But the biggest thing is extreme temperature change. Okay. Yeah. You don't want that. If your power yeah. goes out, get your freaking wine out of it. <laughs> so now we know we're going to have to do a wine episode with yeah. this. Oh, I would most do. definitely. And it's kind of – it might be backwards a little bit, but I prefer I, – I, I enjoy wines. I, I'll I tell you. I know that I like wine. I like red wine. I like – I drink I'll wine. tell you, Cameron, if I had to pick whiskey or wine, I'm a wine guy all day yeah. long. Yeah. Okay. Well, I enjoy yeah. whiskey, yeah. but wine's my, yeah. my yeah. thing. Yeah. I love Same. wine. Me too. Yep. I, I could drink yep. it a lot smoother, better than I could whiskey. We well, can have fair. a lot of fun with the wine episode oh, yeah. with these guys. Wine and food. You know, wine goes with some. I mean, I just, oh, yeah. you know, Paragraph. I have friends who tell me whiskey goes with food. No, it doesn't. No. 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 Whiskey not is, unless you're trying to sober up. food. Whiskey's before food. Wine is with food. Absolutely. See, what about... Wine with food, whiskey. You're after gonna have to food. wait until yeah, the after. Wine, you're gonna have to wait till the wine episode. Yeah. But the hangover, <laughs> I can't guarantee that. So you start with whiskey, then do wine with the food, and then you finish. So you're you're okay. Gotcha. All right, okay. well, we're gonna wrap it up, boys, okay. and we will absolutely get back together and do a wine episode. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Be fantastic. Yeah. We're gonna set up a blind wine tasting for yeah. you guys. Very good. And uh, we'll talk off air and figure out kind of where you are in your wine journey. Okay. And we'll come up with a fun blind to see if we can expand what you've been drinking, what you think you like, and what you think you don't like, and see how we can put that together for okay. you. Yeah, that'd be I fantastic. Am, I am down. That's going to be fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun doing this today. Thanks yeah. for having us, Rob. You guys Thanks livened up the second half of yeah, the yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they st- all the bourbon started hitting, so <laughs> yeah. we opened up. That was great. Yeah. They were Young Bucks. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. And until our next episode, enjoy your next pour.